Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here to talk to you about the great French violinist Christian Ferras. Now, Ferras was a, an amazing artist. Uh, he is not as well known today as he probably deserves to be, but that's true of so many fine artists who never quite were at the absolute top, you know, one of the two or three names that we remember. That doesn't mean he wasn't as good as those people. He was. He was as good as anybody out there. But that doesn't mean you get the name recognition. That's not a musical quality. That's politics. And as far as the politics goes, uh, he had a, a rather unfortunate career. He died in 1982 at the age of 49 by suicide. He had suffered from manic depression and alcoholism, which was associated with that for quite some time. And so he had retired from concertizing really by the late 1960s. And after that, it was it was all downhill. And it was a very, very sad story because he was an extremely gifted musician. He's best known today for the series of violin concerto recordings he made with Herbert von Karajan. And the reason his name came up is because I just did a video on the Sibelius concerto, the best versions, and I did not include Ferras and Karajan in my list of 16 of them, or however many there were, 12, I don't know. And and a bunch of you got went nuts on me. You jumped up and down and screamed and shrieked and carried on and wailed like banshees. And I'm just kidding. Some of you pointed out graciously that Ferris deserved to be in the list, and he did. I mean, lots of people deserve to be in these lists, and I can't talk about all of them, especially if the, the, the chat's already pushing 45 minutes to an hour or something. It's not that you won't sit through longer ones. It's just I, I can't make them. I won't do it. I, my, my, my sense of propriety, limited though it may be, just bridles at the thought of just making these crazy, enormous lists of every recording known to mankind. So... Here is the Ferris Carion Sibelius Violin Concerto, which is excellent. It's very good. And he did also uh, Beethoven and Brahms and Tchaikovsky with Carion. And they're all very, very fine performances. They were somewhat eclipsed when Carion remade all that stuff with the young Anne Sophie Mutter because he had the opportunity with Anne Sophie Mutter to swap sweaters with her, if you remember their album covers. You know, and he couldn't swap sweaters with Christian Ferris. That would have looked inappropriate, wouldn't it? That would have been just, just weird. I mean, frankly, I think the sweater swapping with Anne Sophie Mutter was even weirder. But hey, you know, that's me. Anyway, the bottom line is, I have a suspicion that Carion enjoyed working with Ferris because he could dominate him, or he thought he could. He didn't. He actually didn't. I mean, he was a good collaborator with Ferris. He really was. And I, I know he respected him. But Carion did not get along very well with soloists. He had too firm a view of orchestral sonority, and he was far too self-regarding and narcissistic to let the soloist sort of take over the show. But for some reason, for some reason, Ferris was an exception, at least to the extent that they worked together. I know that Nowadays, we tend to think of these things as, you know, Carion's first Beethoven violin concerto, Carion's Sibelius, Carion's Tchaikovsky. But the truth of the matter is, Ferris was just as positive a force in the proceedings you'd have to be. I mean, you can't do that music unless you're on a, on a, a level of at least equality and to a certain degree subservient to your violinist. And the fact that Ferris was able to hold his own with a, a megalomaniac like Carion really tells you just how powerful a musical personality Ferris was. So all of those Carion recordings are still bouncing around somewhere, but the majority of Ferris's recorded work was done actually for EMI at the time, which is now Warner, and they boxed it all up in this 13 CD icon box, which is really very, very nice, and it's great to have. French Deutsche Grammophon did like a little Ferris boxy thing at one point. There were, you know, a couple discs of his concerto recordings with Carion, but this is where you will find him. 
This is the essence of Christian Ferris. So I propose to go through it and just tell you what's on it because it's very, very good stuff uh, for the most part. I mean, most of it was recorded in the 50s and 60s, so sonically it's not always fabulous, but it's, it's all very listenable. And, and, you know, these were in the days when concerto accompaniments were just that. They really could just be sort of accompaniments. And the violinist had to be out there in front holding his own, and he does. He does extraordinarily well. There's some fascinating stuff in here. So let's go through it and chat about what we have. I have here El Buco. Oh, here is El Buco. I can do it from the book, thank goodness. These are not, of course, sort of original, original jackets. They all look like that the front cover. So first of all, there is, you know, he was French, so obviously there's a lot of French repertoire, and he had um, a regular piano accompanist, Pierre Barbizet, who was an excellent pianist and a marvelous partner to Ferris. They worked beautifully together and, and consistently. I don't think he worked with anybody else, at least on these recordings, but we'll go through with them. First of all, you have the, the Franck Violin Sonata and the Foray Sonata Number 1, and these are beautiful performances from 1957. They're, they're actually somewhat, somewhat legendary. There are a few performances in here, French repertoire particularly, that are, are classics of their genre. And again, they haven't gotten as much attention um, in recent decades because there's just been so many recordings of the same stuff by so many either bigger names or more trendy names. Um, but Ferris's performances more than hold their own. I assure you of that. They are absolutely beautiful. Then we've got the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto, which he re-recorded with Carion, and the Mendelssohn. But these are with the Philharmonia Orchestra under Constantine Silvestri. And I'd rather hear these <laughs> than Carion stuff any day. I mean, just because of Silvestri. But that's really, it's a wonderful collaboration. Then you've got the Brook Concerto Number 1 and the, and the Lalo Symphony Espanol in the old-fashioned four-movement version, um, which is just fine with me. It really is. I, I, it, it has, you know, the Lalo Symphony Espanol is one of those pieces you don't want to get me started. You really don't. Nowadays, of course, you have to do all five movements of the Symphony Espanol. The one they leave out is the intermezzo. Um, in this performance. That's the way it normally went. It was like the middle one, and if you just have four, then you have a real symphony, get it? And, and you know, because Lalo was formerly inept at the best of times, and, uh, yeah, you know, I, I suppose I suppose we should wag our fingers sanctimoniously at the four-movement people, but I can't do it. I can't do it. I just can't. I'm sorry. Then we have three discs of the Beethoven Violin Sonatas, the complete Beethoven Violin Sonatas with Pierre Bar Barbizet. And I have to say, you know, French performances of this music generally get downplayed because they're French. You know, I mean, that's just the way it works. But as we know, Beethoven's music was French, and the French played it best. And the French invented the symphony orchestra as we know it in order to play Beethoven, and they're wonderful Beethoven players. And Barbizet had a, was a fine Beethoven pianist and, and a wonderful partner, as I said, and Ferris was really a good Beethoven violinist. He had this instinctive sort of impulsiveness that works really, really well with Beethoven. He had that revolutionary fervor and the emotionalism, but was temper it was tempered by the usual sort of French feeling for proportion and elegance and taste. It was just marvelous. So this is a really good Beethoven sonata cycle, and uh, it deserves to be heard. I'm glad it's back. I really am. Then you've got the Bach Double Concerto with Yehudi Menuhin and the Bath Festival Orchestra. That was a very famous recording because of Menuhin. And then the Beethoven Violin Concerto with the Royal Phil under Malcolm Sargent. This is from 1959. And it's a beautiful performance of the Beethoven. Sargent was, of course, a slob. He was a, a good conductor who was, seemed to be uninterested in things like, you know, ideas or orchestral discipline. He was best known for doing gigantic British choral works, some of which he did very, very well. I mean, let's we'll give him credit for that. But he's fine as an accompanist, and he was just an accompanist, not more than that. The Beethoven, as we know, can be this transmogrified mystical extravaganza when the conductor and the soloist are on the same ethereal plane of transcendent being. 
but not always. <laughs> and sometimes it's just a violin concerto, as Freud would say. He used to paraphrase, the, paraphrase Freud. So there you've got the Beethoven. And the two romances with the Philharmonische Staatsorchester Hamburg under Leopold Ludwig from 55. And we have two Mozart violin concertos, numbers four and five, with the Paris Conservatoire Orchestra, yay, under André Vandernoot. Yay, yay, double yay. I like Vandernoot. You know, he really did some great stuff. He really did. And then we have, let's see, oh, the Inescu Violin Sonata Number 3. That is just a raging masterpiece and a fascinating essay. You should take a look at the score, you folks who are interested in early views of vibrato because, because Inescu notates every single bit. It's amazing. What an amazing piece just to look at notationally, but it's gorgeous to listen to. And the Debussy Violin Sonata and Ravel's Tzigan. Blech in the version for uh, piano, which is even luckier than the one with orchestra, but he plays it very well. So what the heck? Um, and again, it's always with Pierre Barbizet. And then we've got the Brahms Double Concerto with Kletsky and Tortelier, a wonderful performance of that. And a couple more, well, another Beethoven violin sonata with Barbizet that was recorded in 62, a later version. And then the Berg Violin Concerto. This is a classic version of the Berg Violin Concerto with with Pretra, Georges Pretra, and the uh, Paris Conservatory Orchestra. And the same crew with, with Barbizet and the wind section of the Paris Conservatory does the Berg Chamber Concerto with Pretra conducting. Those were like big deals in France. In the rest of the world, there were many other performances of that music. But again, uh, you know, Ferris is a spectacular fiddler. And if the orchestral sonorities are not what we have come to expect in that music, then what the hell? It's good for a change. You get a little variety. It's the spice of life, isn't it? Um, and then we have uh, the Foray Violin Sonata Number no. 1 remake, but with Violin Sonata Number no. 2. We're now in 1964, and this is Barbizet again. And, and this is interesting, Gula Bando's Hungarian Concerto, um, which is kind of fascinating. This is with the Paris Conservatory Orchestra under Alain Lombard. You're not going to hear it anywhere else. So that's a novelty, and it's great fun to listen to. It really is. And Disc 13 has uh, the Beethoven Fifth Violin Sonata, the Spring Sonata, and the Brahms Third Violin Sonata, again with Barbizet. These are earlier. These are from 53. Um, they were Teldec recordings. But more fascinatingly and wonderfully, you do have the Chausson Concert, which was the last recording that he made for EMI. This was in 1968 with the Peronin Quartet and Barbizet, and it's a classic. It was the reference recording for the Chausson Concert for a billion years. It probably still is. Uh, I think, you know, I mean, Chausson's Concert is such an unusual piece. It's a wonderful work. It's a concerto, but of course it's called Concert, not Concerto, because it's about, it's not really a concerto. It's for string quartet, piano, and solo violin. And, and it's a, it's a concerto-like, well, it's, it's a concert. It's people working in concert. It's maybe Chausson's greatest instrumental work. It's completely unique in the repertoire. And this is the recording that put it on the map. So that's very, very exciting. And so, yeah, and this is still around. That's the reason I wanted to talk about it, because after all of you were mentioning Ferris and saying, you know, we need to talk about him. And I agree, we do. Um, and happily, uh, I took a look at Amazon for twenty four ninety seven or whatever it was. This 13 disc set is out there. And so, um, you know, I, I hope that there's going to be the usual feeding frenzy because I've mentioned it. For those of you who don't know him, it's a wonderful way to get some fabulous repertoire. Most of the standard concertos, the Brahms is not in here. He did that, of course, with Carrion. But what the hey, it's fantastic violin playing from a wonderful, wonderful artist who today is, is um, on the margins of the violin world, but he really was uh, one of the great names during his brief, brief moment in the sun, which was all too brief, unfortunately. Happily, we captured him in his prime, EMI did anyway, here they are, and you can still enjoy them. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.